What's going on guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. It's been a busy couple of weeks, been at Blackberry World, been at Google I.O., events in New York City, been doing unboxings in airports. It's been a wild, wild week, but now I'm finally back, and because my office is still being finished, I'm hanging out in the kitchen doing videos. You wanna know what I'm doing? I'm making sandwiches for all of you because it's a party. Come on over, hang out. Actually, I don't think all of you can hang in here. It's not that big of a space, but if it was, I would definitely invite you. I'm here with the Samsung Infuse 4G. Awesome phone that has the camera turned on at the moment, but awesome phone. Came out, was announced uh, a couple weeks ago, or actually last week, in New York City. We did the unboxing in New York City, and it's a pretty well spec device. 1.2 gigahertz processor, 4.5 inch display, 8 megapixel camera on the back, so it's got a big honking display. Not just a big display, but a big honking display. Front facing camera, and a pretty svelte, thin profile and it's coming to AT&T on Sunday for $199.99. So it's a new Android device to AT&T. Is this the one for you? Well, we'll find out in the full review. Special thanks to our friends at Best Buy. They're hooking us up with some cool phones just like this so you can win them in the OnePod Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy, you don't have to deal with rebates. So you walk out the door paying a non-rebate price. Enough of that, let's get into the review. See if this is the one. Is this the one? Is it up to snuff? Or should you go with another Android device? The uh, Samsung Infuse 4G review starts right now. So here it is, it was announced at CES in the early part of the year, and it's finally coming to AT&T on Sunday uh, for $199.99 after mail-in rebates. It's the Samsung Infuse 4G, and it's a pretty big honking phone. It's a 4.5 inch display, but it's a Super AMOLED Plus display, so it's absolutely beautiful, and I'll give you a run through the specs really quickly. One gig or 1.2 gigahertz, single core Hummingbird processor, so it's not a dual core device, but it's still pretty fast. More on that later. 4.5 inch display, like I said, Super AMOLED Plus, eight megapixel camera, on the back with a flash uh, front facing camera as well, 1.3 megapixels. And uh, you can see it's in this thin, thin profile. It's only 8.99 millimeters thick, very thin device. And you, you know, compare it to something like another one that uh, just came out or is actually coming out, the Droid Charge, you can see the difference in thickness between these two devices. Now it has the typical Samsung hump down here at the bottom and it actually looks like a bigger Galaxy S device if you really think about it. I mean, it kind of has that similar look and feel to it. It has a texturized battery cover. And I'll be totally honest with you, I wasn't sold on this when I first uh, saw it in New York City and I did the unboxing. It looked, you know, I pulled it out and, you know, it has the chrome on the sides and it has a silver battery door as well. And I was like, well, you know, it kind of maybe looks cheap or will look cheap to some people, but it's really grown on me. I think it looks nice. It's a very professional look. And uh, I like this texturized battery cover. It's something easy to hang on to because it is such a small device, or a thin device, rather, that it's easy to, or I imagine it to be easy to slip out of your hand. But still, I mean, you look at this in my hand, and I have pretty big hands. It's a big device. You compare it to something like the iPhone 4, which is also, of course, on AT&T. And you can see, I'm just going to put it right there. You can see the size difference, and you can see what it looks like on the side. I mean, there, you know, there's a big difference between these two devices. Much smaller display in comparison. So you can see... Much, much larger, and it does have, uh, of course, it's an Android device, so it's running Android 2.2, uh, and no word on whether it'll get Android 2.3 or when it'll get Android 2.3, so we'll have to wait and see on that. But it's running Android 2.2, but it's running Samsung's TouchWiz user interface. It's still running 3.0, so it's not quite up to the Galaxy S2, where it's running TouchWiz 4.0, but it's that same version you remember from the Captivate and from the other Galaxy S uh, devices. So we can see, go through some applications here, and you know, if you think it looks like the iPhone, I do as well, and actually before the uh, iPhone came out on Verizon or, you know, some of the other, uh, I shouldn't say some of the other carriers, it's only on Verizon outside of AT&T, but, you know, for people that were on other carriers and were like, I want an iPhone-like device, but something, you know, obviously my carrier doesn't have an iPhone, so what should I get? I would always recommend a TouchWiz enabled device, but you can see here, you know, I have some pre-installed programs. I've actually been using this to put it through its paces for the past uh, few days as my personal device, so you can see some applications pre-installed. But uh, out of the box, you get all share Angry Birds, and it's a special edition. For those of you that like Angry Birds, it's a special edition that uh, offers some special levels and uh, some things that are unique to the Infuse 4G. AT&T Code Scanner, AT&T Family Map, Navigator, Bank of America, which I installed. Um, let's see what else. Facebook comes pre-installed. What else? You get an in-depth look at which apps I use on a regular basis. Uh, Google Search, Latitude, a couple Google programs, Live TV, uh, My AT&T. Let's see. What else? YP Mobile. So not a ton, you know, in comparison to the most recent um, Android devices on Verizon, the bloatware is not too bad. You get those AT&T programs up front, uh, but nothing too bad in comparison to, uh, you know, the Droid Incredible 2 and the Droid Charge, some of these ones that have had a ton out of the box. Now, for the people that are diehard Android users or even some intermediate users, what you're really going to love about this device, let's go down here to Applications. Bam. First AT&T Android device out of the box to support unknown 
uh, or side loading rather of applications outside of the Android market. So you do have that ability here. You check it, and bam, you can install or side load applications. So if there's that keyboard you really like that's not available in the Android market. You want the HTC Sense keyboard on this. You want you know whatever application you can do it on this device without rooting, without changing anything around. So it seems like AT and T's finally listened and realized that that's a feature that you know everybody else had and they were uh, deliberately leaving off. So it seems like uh, they actually listened to user complaints. So you can see touch with seven home screens and you can see up here at the top, you scroll through, you can tell which home screens you're on and of course you can pinch just like you can in HTC Sense and you can go directly to individual screens. So we can bring in that one, bring in that one and you get the idea. And then I can remove those, I can change those around and do more. Let's take a look at the widgets. Actually this widget you see here is a widget I downloaded and I can't remember why I think it's Mimi Mimi clock or something like that from the uh, from the Android market, but that's not a custom, that's not one that comes out of the box. So you can see out of the box you get Buddies Now, the typical Android stuff like Calendar, uh, Google Search. Then you get Days and Dual Clock. This is Samsung's clock widget where you can add you know two clocks of your choosing, hence the name Dual Clock. Uh, Google Voice, Latitude Market, some of the stock Android stuff. Semi Clock, I'm sorry, that's the one that I have. Uh, and so also, if you like that widget, that's what it's called. Social updates, Twitter, YouTube. So the typical stuff, you get a, cus uh, a couple of, can't talk today, a couple of Samsung widgets. Let's go into widgets here, and let's go to Buddies. Actually, no, let's not go to Buddies now. Let's go to Social Updates. This is um, Samsung's kind of social aggregation widget between Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter, where if you have those activated, you can see your updates, you can respond and do all that from the widget directly. So it's definitely a good start, and you know, kind of goes with that whole colorful iOS-like touch whiz uh, menu scheme, if you will. But I think the widgets are, uh, out of all of the different carrier or manufacturer installed overlays, I think TouchWiz has quite a bit of work to do in the widget department. Like I said, the device is 8.99 millimeters thin, very, very tiny device, or very, very thin device, rather. On the left side, you have your volume rocker. Down here on the bottom, you have your microphone and your micro USB charging port. Nothing over here on the bottom right, but over here on the top, you have your power button, just like all the other Galaxy S devices, power buttons on the right side. And then on the top, you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with a uh, second microphone and, of course, camera and flash on the back, front-facing camera over here on the front, along with four capacitive buttons at the bottom of the display. So it's going to be a love-hate thing when you look at the design of this because it's very boxy. It's, uh, it's definitely a big you know, slab rectangle, if you will. And some people are going to love that. Some people are going to hate it. I happen to like the design. I think it fits well in the hand and uh, is easy to hold as opposed to a curvier design like the Droid Charge. Again, personal preference, totally you know, something you may love, something you may hate. But like I said, TouchWiz installed. Let's take a look at messaging. Take a look at some of the keyboards uh, that come installed on this device. And I'm actually going to put it into a new message. So you can see the two, let's go down here to compose. And you can see I've installed this gingerbread keyboard, which you can get in the Android market. It's a free application, or at least the basic uh, light version is free. But out of the box, you get two keyboards, with, or excuse me, uh, three keyboards with it. Swipe the Android keyboard, and because this is running Android 2.2, you'll notice the difference in the keyboard. It's the old 2.2 keyboard. And then you get swipe that, and then the Samsung keyboard out of the box. So I'm not a big fan of the Samsung keyboard. You may be, but let's try quick brown fox wants to go where does he want to go wants to go to the beach wants yo the beach wants to I'm supposed to be to go but you get the idea quick brown fox wants to go what I don't like about uh, the Samsung keyboard is the auto correction it tries to auto correct every single word you put in once you get to a certain point so you type in be and it's like beach you know so it automatically assumes uh, or bear for example and you know you got them across those rare words where it actually is a real word that you're trying to type, but you know it doesn't recognize the word. Like I'll see if I can find one. Um, let's see. It's not doing it right now, but I've come across several while testing it where you know it's a real word. It's something I want to use, or especially if it's something like, um, let's see, L M A O, for example. You can see if it's like a shortened thing like that or an acronym. Uh, it doesn't always catch those, and it becomes a real pain to try and get it to uh, autocorrect over to that. I've been using the Android keyboard and actually the gingerbread keyboard, but I would recommend out of those, you know, the Android keyboard. Swipe is pre-installed on this as well, so if that's your thing, you have it, and you can use it in portrait or in landscape mode. And while I'm up here, you can see the notifications bar. Uh, typical thing you remember from Galaxy S devices with the shortcuts up here, I'm actually gonna go up to screen rotation so we can rotate, and you can see what it looks like in landscape mode. Because of that big 4.5 inch display, I mean, it's just short of a tablet that you're really typing on when you, uh, when you hold it up here. We can see, we'll do, Hey there, how are you? 
brown fox. So very easy to type on. I mean, these keys are very large in comparison. Let me get it up close. Ah, sorry for the lights. Where you can see, in comparison to something like a 3.5 inch display or a 4 inch display, a lot of screen real estate makes for a much larger keyboard. So you have that. Let's take a look at the browser as well. So the keyboard options there, browser, jump into this, and it's interesting because you can customize, go up here, you can view by alphabetical list, alphabetical grid, or customizable grid. But there's not a lot of customization options on the bottom. At least I haven't been able to find a way to change email and web out. If you do know a way, let me know in the YouTube comments or on Twitter because I've searched and searched and searched and maybe I'm just missing something. But uh, I've been un unable to find a way to change that because I would bring down something like contacts and messaging or something like that. But let's take a look. Browser time. Let's see. Bam. Web. And bring up Yahoo. I was looking up U.S. Airways earlier uh, and didn't want you to see my number because you never know. You might want some frequent flyer miles. You're like, I'm going to jack those from his account. Yeah, yeah. Or something like that, if that's what people say these days. But here's Phone Dog. You can see it's loading up, and because it is running Android 2.2, the advertisements are running. Uh, the Flash advertisements are running. I can click on these and get those to initiate. And it's loading up. Now I'm on Wi-Fi because you can see AT&T and my new... Uh, home office is not very uh, not very impressive to say the least uh, AT&T and actually all the carriers I went from being in an area with uh, five bars four or five bars with everybody because there was a cell site right across the street to uh, to nothing so but you can see pinch to zoom very fast there's some checkerboarding that you'll see as you zoom in and zoom out but it's one of those trade-offs do you want slower zoom in zoom out no checkerboarding or do you want faster zoom in zoom out with a little bit of checkerboarding which you can see very fast very fluid for the most part come over here and see the news for example we can scroll up. Senators criticize AT&T and T-Mobile deal. And I can come over, I can tap. Tap in, tap out. No pun intended. But you can see very clean, very easy to use. Now, Samsung has kind of a, a custom uh, interface here as well. When you go to Windows, you can see the actual site. I want to add a second window. And then let's say we want to go back to Phone Dog. It's just a little bit more clean and easy to use as opposed to uh, you know stock Android 2.2 and the way the browser setup works on it.